no more na nime Christ. Ota ke se abu abu na susu ibo. Kisi rombo ya kachuku gazi ya gina ha Jesus. Jesus. That I may go wrong, more combo for. You already call it one big perfect. Oh, my young buffo. Ah, I mean, Mama, oh, boy. I mean, you men are running. It's here, can you? Now, what am I 
Jesus Christ is a boy. Here we are, Calabar, being a million of mercy. Ah, I'm no better man. I rob the fair and mess up the gilly mob. Praise the Lord. I welcome every one of you to the first Monday Bible study at Bagada headquarters of Deep Alive Bible Church. And I'm so happy to see you next time when it comes to your turn. You'll come with all your friends, all your family, all your neighbors. And everyone will be blessed mightily in Jesus' name. You've had the announcement of your own revival time, your own Thursday. Which one is your date? Make it an appointment with the Lord on that day. Power as of old. Somebody give me a good amen. Revival as of old, yeah. miracles as of old, yeah. and even tonight, even tonight, Bible study, something is coming in your heart, yeah. and the Lord will bless you without any limitation in Jesus' name. Yeah. Am I talking to somebody there? What is he? 
I want to see there. Father, in the name of Jesus, we well, thank you for our Bible study tonight. We well, thank you for your people who have come here tonight. And we well, thank you for all those who are listening to the Bible study. Lord, I pray it will be a special day in every life in Jesus' name. And we're asking, Lord, that you will bless your people. We ask, oh Lord, as we carry your blessings around, all the people too will have the spillover from us in Jesus' name. A new day, a new dawn, a new dispensation. I was asking that tonight your spirit will make everything clear in every life. Keep us awake as we study together. In Jesus' name we pray. Today we're looking at John chapter 14. And I'm reading to you from verse 1 all through to verse 14. John chapter 14. Reading from verse 1 all through to verse 14. Let not your hearts be troubled. Ye believe in God. Believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there ye may be also. And whither I go, ye know, and the way ye know. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus says unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. If ye had known me, ye would have known my Father also. And from henceforth ye know him, and have seen him. Philip says unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it suffices us. Jesus says unto him, Have I been so long time with you and yet hast thou not known me Philip he that has seen me has seen the father and how seest thou then show us the father believest thou not that I am in the father and the father in me the words that I speak unto you I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very works sake. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth in me, the works that I do, he shall do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go to my Father. And whatsoever he shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. And the church said, As we look at those verses of scripture today, you'll find that Jesus Christ at this time now, he was near Jerusalem. He was actually moving on to Jerusalem to the point of betrayal, to the point of crucifixion, 
and to the point where he will pay for the sins of the whole world. At this time now, there were no Pharisees in his audience. At this time now, there were no Sadducees in his audience. He was like in the inner circle, inner chamber with the disciples. He was meeting with these people from chapter 13, telling them, explaining to them, exposing to them the things that be and the things that will be and the place where he'll be going. And as we imagine this meeting, in fact, in chapter 13, Judas Iscariot, the betrayer, had gone away from them. He's gone to the people of the world so that he will do what he had purposed to do. He was on his journey to eternal damnation. But now we have the disciples of Jesus with him. No unbelievers around him now. No outsiders around him now. Number one, these were people that had believed that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Jesus Christ is the Savior of the world. That Jesus Christ came so that we can have relationship, interaction, a covenant of salvation with the heavenly Father. Not only that, these were disciples. He had called them one by one. Follow me, I'll make you fishers of men. Follow me, I'll make you fishers of men. And these people had left all, and they had followed him. And he told them, if ye continue in my words, then are ye my disciples indeed. Number one, there were believers around him. Number two, there were disciples around him. He assured these people, not only that they were just disciples here on earth, their names were written in heaven. You remember as the 70 came back and they rejoiced because the devils were subject unto them. He said, rejoice not because the devils are subject unto you, but rejoice because your names are written in heaven. If he told the 70 that, he must have told the 12 as well. They were saved and their names were written in heaven. These were changed people. Their lives had been turned around. He had called them out of darkness into the light. He had called them out of the world unto himself. That's why he told them, as we read on in John, I have chosen you from the world, and you are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. These were people now Look at this, their hearts, their minds were troubled. Look at this one. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Why will they be troubled? Well, they had told them in chapter 13, he said, one of you will betray me. That means this betrayal was now very near and he said he was going he will be talking about the cross he will be talking about the crucifixion he will be talking about his death he will be talking about the fact that the world will kill him they will slay him but on the third day he will rise again and as they began to think about that our Lord is going the Savior is going the healer is going. The one who has been providing for all our needs is going. That's why they were troubled. They were perplexed. Who then will do this and that for us if it's gone? But he told them, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, keep on believing in God. Believe also in me. And now he told them what he was going to do. Not only that, these people now were receiving encouragement from the Lord. They were troubled, they were perplexed, but now he was encouraging them. He says, this is not the end of the road. I go 
then I come again. You will not see me for some time, but you will see me again. He encouraged them. He gave them assurance. He said, I will send the comforter unto you. Encouragement as well as assurance. And in this chapter, as we're studying from verse 1 to verse 14, he gave them the power of attorney to use his name. And as you come to the end of this passage, it says, because I go to the Father, the works I do, ye shall do, and greater works than these shall ye do, because I go to the Father. And then he assured them, and he's assuring you. And I pray that the assurance will take effect in your life, in your heart, even from this day in Jesus' name, that whatsoever ye shall ask, in my name, I will do it. And then to make the assurance doubly sure. He repeats that again. And he says, if you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Tonight, as we come to this passage, we're coming to the understanding of a renewed perception of our inheritance in heaven. That's the topic tonight the renewed perception of our inheritance in heaven. It's a perception. It makes us to understand. And it's a renewed perception. He has said it at other times before. He connects everything together now. He puts everything together now. That's what we're calling it. A renewed perception of our inheritance in heaven. We break the passage to three parts. Number one, the promise of eternal state in heaven. The promise of eternal state in heaven. It's saying that it's going to prepare a place. And it's assuring us that as he goes to prepare a place, he will come again. Let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me, in my father's house, how many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. Verse 3, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am. Where is he now? I say, what well, you see now? Thank God I'm going to heaven. I say, thank God I'm going to heaven. Your eternal abode, eternal inheritance is heaven. That where I am, there ye may be also. That's point one. The promise of eternal stage in heaven. Number two. The passion of earnest search without hypocrisy the passion of earnest search without hypocrisy as he told them he was going to heaven he told them also reading from verse 4 it says and whither i go ye know and the way ye know thomas says unto him lord we know not whither thou goest. Hold on. See, sometimes there are people that sit and their body is there. And you think everybody is listening. He just told them, I go to my father's house. He just told them, I'm going to where I came from. He just told them, I go to prepare a place for you. In that place, paradise, heaven, where there are many mansions. And now somebody is saying in verse 5, Thomas said, Lord, we know not whither thou goest. Thomas, are you paying attention? And I'm asking you too, are you paying attention? And then he said, how can we know the way? And Jesus said, in verse 6, I am the way. Understand? 
is going to heaven and it takes a path to get there it takes a road to get there and you have to walk in the way so that you will get to that final destination and jesus said i am the way to get you to heaven and the path to get you to heaven i am the ladder by which you get to heaven i am the way i am the truth i am the lie no man cometh unto my father no one will get to those mansions of my father without going through me but by me if ye had known me ye would have known my father also and from henceforth ye know him and i've seen him you will know him more Amen. point number two then the passion of earnest search without hypocrisy no hypocrisy in them they actually wanted to know and they wanted to follow after I wanted to get to the place where he was going. Point number three. The power for evangelizing saints on the harvest field. The power for evangelizing saints on the harvest field. He was leaving them behind for a purpose. He wanted them to evangelize the world, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. To do that effectively, they needed the same power that he had been manifesting. They needed the same unction that was on him. They needed the same anointing that he carried. And they needed the same assurance that if they said anything on the harvest field, the six will be done. That's why now he told them in verse 12, Very late, very late, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works I do, he shall do. Remember, he went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil. For the Father was with him, God was with him. In the same way, the Father will be with them and will be with you. The Son, the Lord Jesus, will be with them and will be with you and the holy ghost in his mighty power without any limitation will be with them that's why he said i'm going to be with you the holy ghost is going to be with you i go to the father and the father is going to be with you in his palm presence therefore whosoever believes in me the works i do he shall do on the evangelistic field and then it says in verse 13 and whatsoever ye shall ask in my name that will i do that the father may be glorified in the son through you the father will be glorified if ye shall ask anything in my name i will do it i thought somebody there would say amen the power for evangelizing saints on the harvest field. We we'll come to point number one. Point number one, the promise of eternal state in heaven. We we'll come back to John chapter 14. And we're looking at verse one. Let not your heart be troubled. The Lord is talking to you tonight. Whatever has been a pressure upon your heart, this is the place of solution. Whatever has troubled your mind for yourself, for your wife, for your husband, for your children, for your business, for your circumstances, something is troubling your mind. This night, all that trouble all that oppression all that attack all that confusion will vanish away in jesus name and he tells us he tells us how to be free from trouble all the trauma in the heart how to be totally free he says you believe in god he has all power with him all things are possible in your life nothing will be impossible 
and believe also in me. You believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. It's a savior. It's a sanctifier. It's our healer. It's a deliverer. It's a provider. It's the king of kings. It's a baptizer in the Holy Ghost. And it's the shepherd that will provide for all your needs. Believe in God. Believe in Christ. Tonight, all things are possible in your life. And now he told them. Why was he telling them this? He was telling them so that the disciples would not think that the Pharisees have done their worst. The Sadducees have done their worst. Judas Iscariot has done his worst. He didn't want them to think that it was Herod, Pilate, Pharisee, Sadducee, Judas Iscariot, betrayer, enemy, persecutor, that had the final say in his life. The enemy will not have final say in your life. Persecutors will not have the final say in your life. That's why he told them, I am going. I'm going on a journey. They are not the people sending me away. If I didn't want to go, I could call 12 legions of angels from heaven. And then I will remain. But really, I want to go myself. That's why he said in that verse 2, in my father's house, he's talking about paradise. In my father's house, he's talking about heaven. In my father's house, he's talking about his eternal, everlasting habitation. In my father's house, how many mansions? And if it were not so, I would have told you. Tell me what follows there. Tell me out aloud. I go. I go is the one going. Nobody had final authority over his life except that he laid down his life for salvation. I go to prepare a place for you. For who there? I said it's for me over here. I said it's for me over here. I go to prepare a place for you. Heaven is a prepared place. A prepared place for prepared people. The people who get saved. I go to prepare a place for you. The people who are holy and righteous and sanctified. I go to prepare a place for you. The people who are converted. The people who come to Christ and they stay and they abide with Christ. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. I will come again. Christ is coming again. Have you heard? The day is coming and very near now. When the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of Man and all the dead that hear his voice, those who have died in Christ, they will rise up. And then we which are alive will be together with them. We're going to heaven. We're going to take part in the rapture. Because he said, I will come again and receive you unto myself. Look at this. Look at the receipt. Look at the purpose. That where I am, there ye may be also. Have you seen something here? Number one, the prophecy. The prophecy. I'm going. I will come again. And he has prophesied. He has predicted that definitely he is coming again. He's coming again. Number one is a prophecy. I will come again after going. Number two is the promise. The promise. A place for saints in heaven. I go to prepare a place for you. I pray you'll be there. I said I pray you'll be there. He gives us the promise there and his promise will not fail. That's why we got saved. That's why we're abiding in Christ after we're saved. 
because there's a promise he goes to prepare a place for us and we're preparing ourselves to be there number three is the preparation the preparation because you understand heaven is not for sinners heaven is not for backsliders heaven is not for unbelievers heaven is not for those who remain in their sins how do we prepare we prepare by coming out of sin and coming to the savior we prepare by leaving all the ways of the world and then want to walk in the way of the lord the preparation through salvation the preparation through sanctification sanctify them through thy truth thy watch is truth and it says accept your righteousness shall exceed shall go beyond the righteousness of the scribes and the pharisees ye shall in no wise enter into the kingdom of heaven you must be holy it says follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the lord the preparation he that has this hope in him purifies himself even as he is pure number four is the place and what place are we talking about is the father's house a place of many mansions and it is heaven and it is paradise and it says it's gone there do you remember when stephen was dying he looked up to heaven and then he said i see the son of man standing on the right hand side of god that's the place and thank god i am going there i said i am going there number five is the possession the possession it says there's going to be a mansion with your name attached unto it i have a mansion up on high i said i have a mansion up on high i pray that that mansion will be yours in jesus name number five number six the passion the passion what's the passion love for god for you to love god with all your heart with all your soul with all your mind the passion the passion to have affection for god and to center everything you've got with the depth of your heart to the lord that you have passion for the lord number seven is the purpose the purpose of salvation the purpose of sanctification the purpose of service for the lord the purpose of prayer the purpose of passion the purpose of serving the lord and is to get to that heaven eventually thank god i will be there i say thank god i will be there we're looking at john chapter 17 john chapter 17 i'm reading from verse 24 father i will that they also whom thou hast given me be with me where i am you see that that's what he said it's going to prepare a place for his own people and he prayed to the father and he said here is my desire here is my will here is what i want to see happen father i will that they also whom thou hast given me be with me where i am that they may behold my glory which thou hast given me for thou lovedst me before the foundation of the world O righteous father the world has not known thee but i have known thee and these have known that thou hast sent me and i have declared unto them thy name and i will declare it that the love wherewith thou hast loved me may be in them and i in them you can see that and now he said in that chapter 14 where we read 
he'll be going to heaven and then he will come again look at acts of the apostle chapter one the prophecy as well as the promise acts chapter one verse nine you remember now as you come to the final chapters of john he was crucified as you come to those final chapters of john he died that for you that for me as you come to those final chapters of john he was buried and on the third day he rose again praise the lord i said he rose again praise the lord and then he appeared to his own disciples and as he appeared to them for 40 days now was about to go look at verse 9 acts chapter 1 verse 9 and when he had spoken these things while they beheld he was taken up and a cloud received him out of their sight and while they looked steadfastly toward where shout it toward heaven as he went up behold two men two angels stood by them in white apparel which also said ye men of galilee why stand ye gazing up into tell me this same jesus a savior is coming back a sanctifier is coming back. Our healer is coming back. The Son of God is coming back. This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into, tell me, heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. We are sure then, in so many ways, Jesus went to heaven and in the assurance he will come again he's coming back and when he comes back he will take us into heaven first Thessalonians chapter 4 in first Thessalonians chapter 4 reading from verse 16 first Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 16 for the Lord himself not a substitute for the Lord himself not angel Michael or Gabriel for the Lord himself shall descend from tell me heaven that's where he is now that's where he has gone and that's where he's coming back from he's coming back from heaven for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and the trump of God, and the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we, who are the people? We, then we. Are you among us? Are you among the we? Are you saved? Are you changed? If any man be in Christ, as a new creature, old things are passed away. The old life is gone. And the old behavior is changed. We, the we who are saved, the we who are submissive to the Lord, the we who are surrendered unto the Lord, then we, the we who are sanctified and made holy, the we who are part of the bride of Christ, the we who are waiting and watching for the coming of the Lord, the we who are not yielding to temptation, the we who are not going back to Satan, they are not going back to darkness, they are not going back to occultism, then we, which are alive, alive in Christ, and remain, shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. 
And so, and so, and so, shall we ever be with the Lord. I pray you'll be there. I know I will be there. I know I will be there. Second Corinthians chapter 5. Reading from verse 1. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, it's talking about if we have to go to the portals of death before he comes. And he says, this is what we know. That if this house, this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God and house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. It's saying that he's going to give us a new body. Resurrection body. Heavenly body. Look at verse 6. Therefore, we're always confident, knowing that whilst we're at home in the body, while we're still here on earth, we're absent from the Lord. Verse 8. We're confident, I say, willing rather to be absent from the body, that is, for your soul and for your spirit, to be absent from the body. And then it says, and to be at home in the, at home with the Lord. In verse uh, to be present with the Lord. Once we live here, we go to that eternal abode. I said we go to that eternal abode. That's why Paul, the apostle, said in Philippians chapter 1, he knew this, that the moment he left here on earth, he left the earth, he was going to be in heaven. And it says in verse 21, Philippians chapter 1, verse 21, For me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. But if I live in the flesh, this is the fruit of my labor. Yet what I shall choose, I know not, I want not. For I'm in a strait betwixt two, having a desire to depart and to be with Christ, which is far better. It says, the moment he left the world, immediately there's no soul sleeping. There's no life, there's no dead sleeping in the grave. The body is there, but the spirit and the soul goes to be with the Lord. And thank God, you'll be there. Acts chapter 7. We're reading about Philip now. Look at the experience of Philip. When he left this world, when he died, immediately he went to heaven. When a child of God dies today, although the body is buried here on earth, the spirit, the soul, immediately goes to be with the Lord in heaven. And then on the resurrection day, the body will rise, the spirit and the soul will join with that body, and that whole personality, spirit, soul, and body, will then be with the Lord. But let's look at the experience of Stephen. Acts chapter 7, verse 55. But he, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfastly into, tell me, heaven, and saw the glory of God, and Jesus standing on the right hand of God. And he said, Behold, I see the heavens opened, and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. Then they cried out with a loud voice, and stopped their ears, and ran upon him with one accord, and cast him out of the city, and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their clothes at a young man's feet 
whose name was Saul, verse 59, and he stoned Stephen, calling upon God and saying, everybody, say that again. Read that with conviction. You see, he knew his body will go to the grave, but his spirit will go to God. Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Will you be there? I said, will you be there? How do we get there? Look at John, 1 John chapter 3. 1 John chapter 3. And I read from verse 1, Behold, what manner of law the Father has bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not, beloved. Now, somebody shout now. Now are we the sons of God. And it, it, it does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when it shall appear, we shall see him as he is. We shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. Verse 3. And every man that has this hope in him purifies himself even as he is pure. Are you going to heaven? Are you going to get there? What does he take? Look at verse 3. Read this verse 3 with me. 1, 2, 3, go. And every man that has this hope in him Purifies himself, even as he is pure. First Peter, chapter one, verse three. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which, according to His abundant mercy, has begotten us again unto a lively hope. You have that hope in Him. You're purified. By the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible and not defiled and that fadeth not away reserved in tell me heaven for you who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. I pray none of us will miss that glorious place in Jesus' name. Let's come back to John chapter 14. I'm reading now from verse 4 all through to verse 11. The passion of earnest search without hypocrisy searching where is the way searching i want to know the way searching christ has said i'm going to heaven and i'll come again and take you unto myself and you have the mind you have the heart you have the passion you have the aim you have the goal, you want to be there. And we're searching, where is the way? That's what the people were asking, what the disciples were asking. Honest search with passion, without hypocrisy. John chapter 14, verse 4. And whither I go, ye know. And ye know the way, and the way ye know. Do you know where he has gone? I said, do you know where he has gone? Where? Heaven. And the way, you know. We must know the way. If you know the way to any other city, 
you know the way to any other place and you don't know the way that leads to where Christ has gone, you'll be of all men the most miserable in eternity. And so the way you know, look at verse 5, Thomas says unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest. We cannot say that because now we know. Say, I know. Say, I know. I know where he has gone. He has gone to heaven. And how can we know the way? Here is somebody searching and saying, I want to be there. How can I get there? How can I know the way? Verse 6, Jesus says unto him, and Jesus says unto you, and Jesus says to everyone, I am the way, the truth, and the light. No man cometh unto the Father, but by me. The way, Ecclesiastes chapter 10, I'm reading from verse 15. Ecclesiastes chapter 10, reading from verse 15, the way, the labor of the foolish, will yes, every one of them, because he knoweth not how to go to the city. There are many religious people who are laboring, many religious people who are trying, they think, I'll do the best I can. I'll turn over a new leaf. I'll pull myself up. I will roll on the ground. I will do some good works. I will do this or do that in hope that whatever they do like that will get them to heaven. And the Bible says these are fools. They do not know the way to get to the heavenly city. And it says that labor, the religion, the sacrifice, the celebration, the rituals, the effort, the endeavor, the trial, the religious labor of the foolish, weariest, every one of them, because he knows not how to get into the city we're looking at isaiah chapter 55 and i'm reading from verse 6 isaiah chapter 55 and we're reading from verse 6 seek ye the lord when he may be found call ye upon him while he's near let the wicked forsake his way there are many wicked people, they say, I'll go to church, I'll go and give money to God, I'll build this, I'll build that, I'll burn candle, I'll burn incense, I will fast, I will go to Jerusalem, I will drink the water of Jordan, wicked man. That's his way, his way of wanting to get to heaven, by himself let the wicked forsake his way and the righteous man his thoughts and let him return unto the lord and he will have mercy on him and to our god for he will abundantly pardon for my thoughts are not your thoughts neither are your ways my ways, says the Lord. The way to heaven, the Father has given us that way. He has sent Jesus Christ, and Christ has died for us. As you look at Christ, who sacrificed for us, who died for us, who shed his blood for redemption, and you take that way as you remember i am the way the truth and the life eternal life will come unto you verse 9 for as the heavens are higher 
than theirs. So are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. The way of the Lord, that the way that leads home to heaven. Acts chapter 4. Acts chapter 4, we're reading from verse 12. Acts chapter 4, reading from verse 12. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. He is the way, the way to salvation. He is the way, the way to heaven. He is the way, the way to redemption and righteousness. He is the way, the way to the Father's mansions on high. Neither is there salvation. It's the way of salvation, the way to salvation. Neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. I pray you'll be saved. John chapter 3. I'm reading from verse 3. To get to heaven, to get to the kingdom of God, here is what will happen. And Jesus is the only one that can make it happen. He'll make it happen in your life. I said he'll make it happen in your life. John chapter 3 verse 3. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Verse 5, Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. And the only way you can be born again is to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. You turn away from your sin and you turn to Christ as your Savior, as your Redeemer. And as you do that, salvation will be yours in Jesus' name. Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10. Reading from verse 19. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus. You see, he has shed his blood for you. He has died your death. He has paid the price for you. All you need to do now is see that blood and accept and appropriate and acknowledge by faith. He did that for me. And then he says, you are able to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, which he has consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say, his flesh, and having an high priest over the house of God. Let us draw near with a true heart, no hypocrisy. Let us draw near with a true heart, no pretense. Let us draw near with a true heart, in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith, without wavering for he is faithful that promised he has said whosoever shall call on the name of the lord shall be saved and is faithful to his promise he has said whosoever comes to me i will in no wise cast out and he is a faithful savior he is faithful that promise. That's why it says in verse 35 Hebrews chapter 10 verse 35 cast not away therefore your confidence 
which has great recompense of reward. For ye have need of patience, that after ye have done the will of God, ye might receive the promise. Then he tells us, for yet a little while, and he that shall come will come. He that shall come will come. I read to you, he that shall come will come. He said, I am coming again. He will come. He is coming. And he will not tarry. Now the just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, anyone planning on backsliding there? If any man draw back, anyone going to draw back there? You will not draw back. I said you will not draw back. Satan will not pull you back to hell in Jesus' name. Now the just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. For we are not of them who draw back unto perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. Lord, I believe. You see, all that passage I've read to you, there is, number one, the desire to know the way. The desire to know the way. They wanted to know the way to get to those mansions on high. To get to the Father's house. That's why they were asking those questions. And the Lord answered them. The desire to know the way. Number two is the, is the decision to choose the way. The decision to choose the way. He reveals the way to us. And he says, I am the Savior. I am the Sanctifier. I am the Qualifier. The one that qualifies you to get to heaven. And you need to make the choice, the decision to choose the way. Number three, the demand to walk in the way. After he has revealed the way to you, after you have decided, I choose the way, then you understand he demands that you walk in the way he has revealed. You walk in the way of righteousness and holiness. The grace to do that, the Lord give abundantly to you in Jesus' name. Jeremiah chapter 6. Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 16. Thus says the Lord, Stand ye in the ways, and see, and ask for the old paths. Where is the good way? And walk therein. Where is the good way? The way of the grace of God. What is the good way? The way of godliness. What is the good way? The way to glory. What is the good way? The narrow way, the narrow path that leads to life eternal, that leads to heaven. Ask for the old paths. What is the good way? And walk therein. And ye shall find rest unto your souls. I thought somebody there would say amen. amen. Number four, the duty to show the way. The duty to show the way. You've taken that way. You're walking in that way. And you have chosen that way. And you abide in that way. Then other people that do not know they do not know the way to heaven. And they're still asking like Thomas, we know not the way. And Jesus has given you the answer. You'll take that to other people because you have the duty to show the way. Number five, 
the determination to continue in the way. The determination to continue in the way. It's not those who have started that we glory in, but those who continue to the very end. Second Peter chapter 2. In Second Peter chapter 2, verse 21. For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they have known that way, they have known it, to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. That is, if somebody did not know, he will still perish and go to hell, but somebody who has known the way, he turns away and he follows the way of perdition. It would have been better for them if they had not known the way. You will continue. I said you will continue. <laughs> Number six, the damnation of departing from the way. The damnation of departing from the way. Once has revealed the way to us. And it says this is the way. Walk ye therein. We desire to know the way. We decide to choose the way. And we also demand to walk in the way. And we have the duty of showing the way to other people. We have determination to continue in the way. And there's damnation for those who depart from the way. Jude. From verse 11, Jude verse 11, one to them. For they have gone in the way of Cain and ran greedily after the error of Balaam for a watch. And, and perished in the gate, saying of Cory, These are spots in your feasts of charity. When they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear, clouds they are, without water, carried about of winds, trees whose fruits with the rest, without fruit, twice dead, plucked up by the roots, raging waves of the sea, foaming out their own shame, wandering stars, to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. I pray that will not be your Lord. Then number seven, the destiny of all who abide in the way. The destiny of those who abide in the way. We're coming back to John chapter 14 in john chapter 14 from verse 7 if he had known me he should have known my father also from henceforth ye know him and have seen him philip says unto him lord shows the father and it suffices us jesus says unto him have I been so long time with you, and yet thou hast not known me, Philip? He that has seen me has seen the Father. You have seen him. You have known him. You have known his love. You have known his salvation. You have known his power. And you have known the power of God too. How sayest thou? Show us the Father. Believest not thou that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Believe, believe me, that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, or else... Believe me 
for the very works sake and all the works of the Lord that we have seen in salvation in healing in deliverance in granting us miracles they show that this is the very Christ the Son of God the Savior of the world but now as he was going away where was he going to I said where was he going to going away to heaven is leaving us here on earth and why is he leaving the believers the disciples here on earth so that we can harvest the souls that are still there in the world and bring them into the kingdom if we're going to do that we need his power come to john chapter 14 verse 12 verily verily i say unto you he that believeth on me the works that i do he shall do also and greater works than these shall he do because i go to the father our own time has come the time for greater works that time has come the time for greater glory that time has come are my people there i said the time for greater glory that time has come it will happen in your life it will happen in my life it will happen in your family and jesus said all we need to do is believe on him and as we believe on him that greater power and those greater works will be done in jesus name verse 13 and whatsoever he shall ask in my name that will i do that the father may be glorified in the son if ye shall ask anything in my name tell me i will do it how does that happen it happens as we follow through and we allow the holy ghost to take full residence inside us that's why jesus said in acts chapter 1 verse 4 i mean assembled together with them he commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which says he, ye have heard of me. That's how those greater works will be done. For John truly really baptized with water, but he shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. Verse 8, but he shall receive but he shall receive, but he shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Somebody said, Amen. Amen. If you stay in your house, without going out within Jerusalem here if you stay in your house without going out to Judea if you stay in one place without going to Samaria and going to the uttermost part of the earth the power will not be manifested because we receive the power so we can go out with the gospel and that's how the greater works will be done acts chapter 4 verse 29 acts chapter 4 reading from verse 29 and now lord behold their threatenings and grant unto thy servants that with all boldness they may speak thy word by stretching forth thy hand to heal and that signs and wonders may be done by the name of the holy child jesus that's what jesus said 
Whatsoever you shall ask in my name. But it's as they went out. It's as we go out. That power will be manifested in Jesus' name. Verse 31. And when they had prayed, the place was shaking where they were assembled together. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. It will happen again. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. I said it will happen again. And they speak the word of God with boldness. They were filled with the Holy Ghost. They were saturated with the Holy Ghost. They received the power of the Holy Ghost. And they speak. They speak. They went out and they spoke the word of God with boldness. Verse 33. And with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And great grace was upon them all. Any amen over there? Yeah. Acts chapter 5. I'm reading from verse 14. Greater works than these shall he do because I go unto the Father. Acts chapter 5, verse 14. And believers were the more added to the Lord, multitudes, both of men and women, in so much that they brought forth the sick into the streets and laid them on beds and couches. That at the least the shadow of Peter passing by might overshadow some of them. These are the greater works, greater works. The shadow of Peter and the shadow of anyone as you believe that those greater works will be done as just a shadow, even without touching them, touches them, miracles will take place. Verse 16. There came also a multitude out of the cities round about unto Jerusalem, bringing sick folks and them which were vexed with unclean spirits. And tell me, and tell me out aloud, and they were healed, everyone. They were healed, everyone. Our time has come. Acts chapter 19. Acts chapter 19, reading from verse 11. In Acts 19, verse 11, remember, he that believeth on me, the works I do, he shall do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go to the Father. Acts chapter 19, verse 11, greater works, and God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul so that from his body were brought unto the sea and cashiers or aprons and the diseases departed from them and the evil spirits went out of them. Greater works happened in the acts of the apostles and now our own turn. As we said, it's a new day. I said this, a new day. It's a new dispensation. And those greater works will be done through you, through me, through us, and through our church in Jesus' name. But you know how it happened? And you know why it happened? And you know when it happened? And you know where it happened? Because they had the power of the Holy Ghost. Acts chapter 19, verse 2. Acts chapter 19, verse 2. And he said unto them, Have you received the Holy Ghost since ye believed? You must be asking yourself such a question. Have you received power since you believed have you manifested power since you believed have you been submissive and sanctified 
Since you believed, have you been entirely consecrated to God? Since you believed, have you received supernatural courage? Supernatural boldness? Supernatural fearlessness? Since you believed, have you done any work for God? Have you done any good work for God? Have you done any great work for God? Have you done greater works for God since you believed? Have you converted, have you been used of God to convert anyone? Have you won any abiding convert unto the Lord since you believed? Have you received a personal heavenly vision, heavenly commission? And you know you've got this passion from the Lord and you've got this power from the Lord. Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? If you have not been baptized in the Holy Ghost, a new day has come. Power will come in your life. If you have not received sanctification, there's a new day. It will happen in your life in Jesus' name. If you have been stagnant, if you have been sluggish, if you have been pulling back, and you have not been up and doing, rising up and going to the harvest field, there's a new day. A new power will come unto you. New unction will come in your life. And as you go, you'll find the fulfillment of the word of God in your life in Jesus' name. He that believeth on me. Are they there today? He that believeth on me. Where are they today? The works I do, he shall do. Say, the works he has done, I will do. And greater works than those I will do. Because he has gone to the Father. Mark chapter 16, verse 15. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them. And these signs shall follow them that believe. I believe us in the house today. I said I believe us in the house today. The signs will follow after you. The signs shall follow them that believe. In my name, they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly sin, it shall not hurt them. Poison will not kill you. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. So then, after the Lord had spoken unto them, it was received up into heaven. And he sat down on the right hand of God and went forth. Somebody there is going forth. I said, somebody there is going forth. What do you see there? Rise up on your feet if you are going forth. And they went forth. And we're going forth. I said, we're going forth. I said, we're going forth. And they went forth and preached everywhere. The Lord walking with them. And confirming the word with signs following. Your own day has come. Your own time has come. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord in prayer. And say, Lord, here I am. Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? Have you received true conversion? And true salvation? And true transformation? Since you believed? Have you received sanctification? Holiness of heart? Since you believed? Have you been entirely consecrated to God? Your heart, your soul, your mind, your will. Have you consecrated everything to God since you believed? Have you received passion? Passion for souls since you believed? 
Are you working for God? Have you got any convert? Abiding convert since you believed? Your own time has come. Lay everything on the altar. Consecrate yourself to the Lord. Lay everything there and say, Lord, here am I. I will go forth. And the signs shall follow after you. And the power in the name of the Lord, in the anointing of the Holy Ghost, will never leave you. These signs shall follow them that believe. Lord, I believe, send me forth.